Hey, it's Andre, and this is the E-Flight PT-17. We're gonna do a real quick unboxing, get my first impressions of the aircraft. Obviously, before I fly it, I gotta get into the remote and program it up, but I'm pumped. It's yellow, it looks awesome. Let's go! I picked this up today from my local hobby store, Great Hobbies here in Ottawa, at the train yards. And I had been humming and hawing about the PT-17 for a while. And if you're seeing the smile on my face, it's for a really good reason. Oh, this thing is gorgeous. Okay. This was not a mistake purchase. Oh, wow. This thing looks amazing. All right, get the box out of the way. I'll go through the specs, but you guys know the specs. This aircraft's actually been out for a couple of weeks, so, oh, look at that. I love yellow airplanes. Honestly, there are a few left on my checklist, and, like, it's things like a Harvard, you know, a, a T6, but in the Canadian colors, just because they just look awesome in the scheme, right? So, all righty, let's pop this bad boy out. Well packaged. Uh, actually, that's that's pretty standard but it's well done uh you know you can tell actually the uh, the spinner is right on the edge of the capacity so but still not too bad at all cut some tape and let's get this thing open it looks like this piece is a one piece center piece actually i'm really impressed this thing is going to be a nice addition to the fleet And we got another piece over here, which has got some retaining pieces. Uh, one of the reasons I went for another biplane is while I have, and if you watch my update, I explain while I have some really nice biplanes, don't go too deep on your cuts either, because you got wings there. Um, I'm always petra, I'm terrified that if I do something stupid and crash one, it's over, it's done. Like that SC5A of mine is in really great shape. And, uh, you know, and the Albatross is really nice and, and just, I just don't want to risk them and they're hard to get spare parts for nowadays. So it's like, eh, small package of small items here. Those are wing struts and they are labeled left and right. Very nicely done. Little accessory bag, A, B, bind plugs, some screws, and looks like some Linkage pieces, we'll mow more once we get to the manual. Then this one does have a manual somewhere in here. There it is right there. Nothing in there, nothing hidden in there. Put those foam pieces aside. All right, moment of truth. Well, there's the manual folks. We'll go through that for the setup obviously, but let's pull the fuselage out in the meantime. Oh boy. How am I going to get you out? Ah, nice lift. Ho, 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 ho. Now the guys at the shop told me that the, de the, the detail work on the front cowl was amazing. Oh, look at that. They weren't lying either. Oh, this thing is a really slick looking machine. And the battery bay. Obviously, I will be running an adapter on my, uh, from my EC3 to... Uh, XD30. Um, the question earlier in the evening was, could you theoretically run a larger size battery? It is spec for a 2200 to 3300, if I'm correct. I have to check everything. But I don't think you could run a 4000 in here, um, which is too bad. I'll have to play around with it to find out. But, oh, that is a really sharp scheme. Nice. And, yeah, the little dude does need a, he does need a scarf on board. <laughs> uh, that's not bad at all. Okay. Put that down and keep extracting stuff. Uh, so I was told, and it is indeed, sprung landing gear, which is a really nice uh, addition. So uh, that's not too, too bad. Hopefully that holds up to the, uh, you know, Andre uh, style of flying and landing. Rudder, or sorry, elevator one, elevator two. Okay, uh, prop, looks like a swing spar. Other little accessories in here, again, labeled left and right. So those are more wing struts. Uh, prop, what is the prop? 
Is it the standard nine inch? I don't think it is. It looks kind of bigger. It's 11 by seven and it is geared in the back. So a specific prop. So I will go to the shop obviously and pick up spares because I always like having one spare because if you have that one spare, the main prop never dies. All right, and now for the wings. Obviously biplane. So it's gonna have two. All right, so the other section of wings are not in plastic bags. And there they go with some taped pieces, ailerons, one and two. Oh yeah, look at that, eh? Very nice, very clean. Actually, it's a quite a striking color. Okay, you know what? I initially wanted that blue and yellow look, but I'm digging this a lot. I got too many things up here. <laughs> Let's put some stuff aside. Get rid of this bag. That is really nice. So obviously this is the top wing. And I don't think there are any other items inside this wings manual. Look at that. Oh, oh this is a, yeah. No, I'm not regretting this acquisition at all. Look at this thing. This is gorgeous. I'll have to find a, put a little second pilot in there eventually. No, this is a nice looking machine. All right, let's jump into the manual and get building right away because this won't take us long. Um, obviously, I'm using my FR Sky Tyrannus with the uh, Orange RX module. I am working on actually getting a proper full uh, spectrum module, no, not a spectrum radio, unfortunately. Um, so we'll go from there. All right, so it says to start with the fuselage and the main landing gear. I'm actually gonna get my stand. Okay, so I've got my stand, and if you remember when I built the commander, <laughs> I learned a valuable lesson. Use additional padding, otherwise you risk scratching your brand new plane, which was just devastating. Stay. All right, I'm wrapping myself up here in my cord. Okay, so they basically say step one is landing gear. So we'll take the uh, pilot out because we don't need him getting damaged. Ooh, I just noticed something. Eh, look at that. So this gives you access to the, uh, the 40 amp ESC inside the, uh, the cockpit. So I guess, you know, if you want to pull your batteries out and everything, that's kind of cool and handy. Eventually, I will uh, modify all my uh, uh, ESCs, but I kind of like to wait till the warranty is over before I do that. Plus, I can get those adapters from overseas for pretty cheap these days. So I'm like, eh, just buy a bunch of them and you know anticipate that you're going to need them. So interesting pulling that out and getting it back into the lock position past the ESC. There we go. Now it's there. Uh, I am noticing the, the wires for the motor to ESC are a little jumbled up back there, but that's okay. All right, let's get some uh, landing gear installed in this bad boy. So aileron controls. So the ailerons go into the receiver through a Y connector. That's pretty cool. All right, landing gear time. So this is pretty obvious. It snaps in. I am noticing already a little bit of flat plastic fatigue at the top of the landing gear. So obviously that's that's the uh, sprung piece stretching it a little bit, so. And it's all, actually this is really nice. It's uh, Everything has a very particular spot where it goes. Now, to do this without too much carnage, right? It looks like this has to be spread out a tiny bit to fit over top all this stuff. So how do I do this without incurring too much damage? Or does it sit up a bit? No, it sits flush. Okay. Ah, oh, I see what's going on. All right. Looking at the photos and everything. No one wants to scar foam, right? So it's like very lightly insert all this stuff. All right, the springiness is kind of cool. Just, I'm just kind of curious how this is supposed to line up. I'm not missing anything. Install landing gear into a pocket and use 
the screws. <laughs> okay. Looks like these are the correct screws. So let's see how this goes together. Ooh, this is pretty gnarly and terrifying to do. Oh yeah, okay, it's clicking in the position, but yikes, that's all I'm gonna say about this process. Okay, it's going over slowly. You will, oh wow. Not a fan of that process. All right, squeeze over, getting there. All right, there it does fit over. Whoa, isn't that gnarly, folks? All right, so these are supposed to be the screws. I guess that's correct, 10 millimeter. I could get out the caliper and measure it, but they look like what we're after. All right, screwdriver. fingers that looks awesome so that should compress down great maybe I'll lubricate that a little bit nice wheels okay that's the landing gear so over she goes halfway there all right next up is the elevator controls And it appear that this is the elevator spar. Now, if you recall, when I was doing the commander, I was having an issue because I wasn't pushing that thing far enough over. So this time I'm being observant and my controls are there. Nice thing, hey, look at this. This kit comes with, uh, next time, I forgot when I was at the hobby store to pick up some fuel hose. Um, I really don't like it when manufacturers don't include fuel hose on all their clamps. It's, uh, it's just such a little bit of security, so why wouldn't you do it, right? So, right, that goes through that, and then that goes through the back here. There's a little bit of foam through that hole, so you have to clean that out. So I want to make sure that's all clear, so that doesn't interfere. All right, that sits in nice. Don't want to be too rough with that and crush any foam unnecessarily. I like the color. I like yellow. We knew that. All right. Next piece through. Mine it all up. Slide it in and connect. Solid connection. And just work it all the way into its seat. Great. Look at that. We have a elevator. And I will align that out after. Auto flexing, great. All right, so that's C, package number C for screws. My screwdriver is down there. Great. Nice receiver, nice servos. Sub micro analog is what these servos are. So not bad. It's, uh, you know, in a standard uh, AR636A uh, radio from Spectrum. So not too bad. 
and then everything is already plugged in. I think you have to, oh, one, two, everything is hooked in already. So that's pretty impressive. We just have to dump it all, the rest of it in and clean up a little bit. I should actually grab one of my adapters right away. Let me see my knife, my knife is over here. Oh. Presto, adapt it. <laughs> Okay, I'm actually, oh, they tell me, ah, uh, you know, this is a nice thing about instructions, eh? Um, you know, put it in the bottom clevis. Great, simple, thank you, you know? That's, uh, um, I haven't zeroed any of the servos, so I probably am gonna wait and do that after the fact, once I, everything is on and neutral, and then I can set it up so it's nice and correct. And uh, I will be flying with safe, and uh, I will do the safe select on and off on a toggle switch. Uh, and set it up. All right, wings. So it's the lower wing first. And uh, that looks pretty, pretty simple to do. Great. All right, I'm going back onto the control. Flip that over, put that on the bed, move it over. Oh, nice. There are nice wing screws here. They look pretty good. They move around actually too. That's fascinating. All right. Aileron controls. So there's some tape here. And I guess the idea is to try and get this as nice and neat as possible and then flip it all over. So I'm gonna push that tape back down and see if I can get all of this to connect nice and cleanly. Oh, look at that little paint on there. Clean that off. All right. So there's a little uh, notch, so that's pretty cool. The wing seat's nice and clean. I say clean already a few times, eh? Woo, butterfingers. All right, let's get those wires aligned. So that is yellow to yellow or orange to orange. Okay, and then number two. All right. Perfect. Now, let's just see how that all folds down. You're not gonna be able to see it from that angle, but I'm trying to minimize the uh, wires. Actually, it's got enough space to host all the wires, I think, quite nicely. But obviously, you wanna make sure everything sits as flat down as possible. Let's see if I can get this just do this lined up right away and do it in one shot, right? Okay, that seems okay. Do I have any wires in the way? So far, I think I'm getting away with this. So we'll push that down. One is in. Even pressure. Do I have a wire in the way? Mm, nope. So far, no. Nope. Okay, so just keep applying even, consistent pressure. I'm not happy with that yet. Nope, obviously the wires are getting in the way somehow. So I'm gonna see if I can feed this a little cleaner. I wonder if that's what that hole is for. So what I've done, there's a hole there, and I'm just, there we go, so that was the trick. That's not bad at all. One seems taller than the other, though. That's interesting. Huh. Why would that have happened, huh? See that? I got one piece that's taller than the other one, so I'm gonna go back and check that out. I think that's when I was spinning it, it's possibility. I think those get locked and secured. Uh, in the bottom, 
Those are probably what those extra pins are for. Countersunk A. Secure the bottom with the retaining clips, ring clips, and they are probably the ones that are in here. Now, like I said, the only one I'm not happy about is that right one, and I'm going to try and, the left one, I guess, and I'm going to try and correct that very gently. Yep, yeah, you just apply pressure, bring it up very slowly. There you go. Oh yeah, they screw down and up, so. Okay, interesting. Definitely not a plane I'll be taking apart very often. Okay, I see the principle behind it, so you can screw these down and up, and that tightens them up. Eh, neat oh, very interesting, very interesting indeed. All right, so I'm gonna put some wing clips into that. All right. Secure the ring by rotating the retainer clips into the pin. Huh. Oh, I see, okay, neat. Okay, so what there is, is the screw goes in. This is not really well illustrated anywhere in the manual, but from bag A, um, there are two holes. And so these guys go through the retaining clips and we'll end up holding. Huh, a lot of uh, figuring out yourself I'm noticing in this plane. But I mean, the principle's there. And I suppose you could just simply watch the Horizon video, I guess. Okay, so you get this guy in, you turn that guy down, and then you put the screw through. And that holds your wing in. Okay, that's pretty cool. So if you're looking closely, the retaining clip, the manual shows a little tiny picture, but it's a really bad example. You turn this, your retaining clip, and then you put a screw through, and that'll prevent your wing from coming off. Handy dandy. All right, so where did that screw go? Here's a screw. Actually, is not too bad of an idea. And they actually illustrate it with, uh, they don't show whether it's forward or not either. That's even worse. So is it like this? Or is the other retainer? Okay, that's the way I'm going to go with it. I'm actually looking at the photo for a reference. That's hilarious. Nope, it's the way I had it initially with the retainer clip feeding in to the wing makes sense. So that's the only part of the instructions I'm really not in love with. So this is the way it is designed to go in. And I will hold this up momentarily and show you once we're through. It's actually a pretty neat idea. Slippery little screws. I'm no pro with a screwdriver. That's a shot from the last video. Yeah. You know what? Let's go for the flight test screwdriver. If I can find it.
All right, so next we find the hole for the other winglet piece, uh, which, sorry, microphone on my chin, which might be a little low. So I'm actually gonna get in there and move this guy a little bit and try and back him up. I got it too low initially, so. I now have to monkey around with it until I can loosen it up a touch. There we go. Pieces through, turn it until it's in position, and then lock it in. Nice, okay, that's not too bad. I guess it makes it pretty easy to take the uh, wing off if you have to. Uh, never seen this kind of setup before, so this is, I wonder if this is something new or if something they just developed particularly for this aircraft. that I saw it back off so it needs a little bit more tension there you go that's in that's not coming out cool all right my wing is on now here you go holding it up close showing you how I did it so the instructions kind of show you but not fantastically but there you go all right Tight. That seems to take a lot of pressure to uh, sink, particularly the uh, smaller piece, down into the wing. <clears throat> oh, sugar. I'm scratching up my wing doing this. This is no fun. Wow, this is definitely not a uh, easy task. It's <laughs> pretty nuts. Get in there. There we go. Wow. <laughs> that took a lot more force than I thought it would sink in. And the front one, somewhere. There we go. Wowzers, now that, <laughs> let me get back on camera. That's the hard part in the airplane, getting these two puppies in to those receivers. Uh, I don't think I pushed that guy down too much. Did scar that wing a little tiny bit there doing that. So something to keep an eye on. Um, all right, <laughs> next phase is to drop the uh, top wing down. So here we go. Like I said, I don't think I'm taking this thing apart ever again if I can avoid it. And this, they should just go into those receiver points and bolt in from there. Ah, stepping on my cord again. How, oh, look at that. So it's a front, that's kind of neat. So Chris was mentioning during the podcast how the, the main wing attaches and the little sliders, rather than going backwards in the old style and having receivers, the, 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 the pins actually go through the top of the wing. So that's pretty darn cool actually. And they're all four there. They're the narrow little things, so. All right, so we'll see if we can sit this thing down and line it all up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Start to get an airplane. airplane that's moving all over the place on my bench. 
Okay, so after you've done that, it's these secure pins. Four of these narrow little pins. Not bad. Okay, so outer wing. This, I'm sure, is going to take me a little bit of time. You have to feed it in and fuss with it, I bet. Hmm. Yeah, this is definitely the tedious part of the build. Because you can't really tell until you're in. And don't apply too much pressure to these pins because I'm noticing they are a little flimsy. Uh, maybe I'll try the centers and then work my way out. Maybe I'll have better success in routing that through there. Hmm. I can see this is gonna require an extreme amount of patience and time. One. Nope, completely missed. Well, this is an interesting experience, I have to say. I think I caged it on that shot. All right. Nope, didn't get the back one. No, did not get the back one. Wow. So this is gonna definitely, one of these things that you're definitely gonna wanna take your time with and just very slowly check each one as you do it to make sure you land it the way it needs to be landed. Got it. Okay, so just really push everything down nice and flush. Okay, so let's do this outer wing while I'm here. Okay, let's see if we can get the first piece through. So pushing down. Feels like I'm almost there. Definitely caged it, all right. And got on the other one. So the trick is basically push it all the way down, nice and flush, and run them through. So it's not that bad once you figure that out. Okay, so there's the first one. Lots of tension, and then I think I got the second one. Yep. 
Yep, that's engaged all the way. Push this all the way. If I pull it back. Yep, that one's in there. That's seated in, great. And then the last one, same deal. Shove them all the way in. And applying pressure on the top. And then once you're through, push. Come on. Oh, just when I thought I had the hang of it, huh? Always fun. There we go. And same thing in the back, a little extra pressure. Push with your thumb. Ugh. Take your time on this process, really take your time. It will seat and then you'll be able to lock it in and you'll feel it and you'll know it. There you go, and see that? That went in nice and smooth once I moved it around a little bit, so yes. Feels good. All of them are in nice and firm. Do check that out, you know, give it a tug, feels nice. And then you can turn them up, I guess, so you don't see them. That works a little bit. I guess if you keep pulling back just a tiny bit, you can turn them upwards a little bit. Whatever. Nice. That wing's not coming off. Beautiful. All right, I'm Andre and this is the E-Flight PT-17. So. Not the most gentle build. It's definitely, there's some challenges. So um, keep an eye on those pins when you do the upper wings and obviously snapping these guys into it. Uh, those were the, there are some little things as you saw through the video, the landing gear, the screws in the directions. So still, uh, this thing looks great. So I am gonna program it up onto my radio and I think tomorrow will be a maiden with it. Uh, I obviously have to figure out the CG and everything, and I'm probably going to fly it on some uh, 3S 2200s based on the size of the uh, capacity inside the uh, the uh, the battery bay. Um, I think it looks great. I mean, and it's it feels nice. So I'm uh, certainly looking forward to enjoying some yellow airplane flying through the sky. I'm Andre. This is the PT-17. Thanks for watching.